productivity, winning strategies, and aligning employer-employee goals. If this sounds like something your business could use more of, then you've come to the right place. The Business Mechanic Show with your host, Vaughn Sigmund. Let Vaughn show you how to develop, improve, and jumpstart your business. So now, please welcome the host of The Business Mechanic, Vaughn Sigmund. In today's show, we're going to be talking about how to overcome imposter syndrome. We're going to unmask how you can recognize it and overcome it so that we can strengthen your competence through following these steps. Welcome to the Business Mechanic Show. I'm your host, Vaughn Sigmund, the co-founder of Results Driven Leadership. We provide the knowledge, skills, and tools you need to advance your career, just like we're going to talk about today. And whether you're just getting started or have been running a business for years, we have the advice, the tips, the tools to help you stay ahead of the competition. So again, today, we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome, how to recognize it, how to overcome it. So let's mm -hmm. get started. Productivity, winning strategies, and aligning employer-employee goals. If this sounds like something your business could use more of, then you've come to the right place. The Business Mechanic Show with your host, Vaughn Sigmund. Let Vaughn show you how to develop, improve, and jumpstart your business. So now, please welcome the host of The Business Mechanic, Vaughn Sigmund. All right, let's roll into this. Eric, what precipitated this whole conversation today is a conversation we were having earlier yeah. about a coaching session you had with a really sharp person, one of our clients that yeah. manages your coaching. And so tell me about that coaching experience, what you saw, what this poor manager is going through, and some of the discussion you had to get him to realize he's better than he thinks he is. I think that to exclude names, obviously, but I think there's a piece here that we have a great client and we did the review on this person. And while he's thinking he's is okay or, or really not doing a good enough job in his mind, and through that conversation we had with him, got him back on track of saying, hey, listen, this is what the feedback is for you guys, for you and how you're doing with your job. People love you. People, you've got a lot of strengths. After all that went through, we had, we concluded with the review process. And I think he was a little bit surprised and shocked, I think about, wow, people really, I think they think that I'm pretty good, but he still was doubting himself. So the follow-up on this, the classic is, is so a month later, we do a follow-up as we try to give a review process and give some follow-up or some coaching if necessary, if there's a need for it, which in this case, I think there was a need because there's some things of his opportunities that he had that he needed to work on, but it still fell back into his strengths, which was the interesting part. And I kept on deciding, what? why is he still continuing to have a conversation about what he's not doing very well? You know what I mean, Vaughn? And I, and so we dug deep into it a little bit. And the more we uncovered, it was something just popped in my brain. He doesn't think he's very good. And everyone around him, what he's doing, he's pretty darn good. As a matter of fact, the CEO said, hey, I'd like you to coach this person because you don't coach somebody, Vaughn, by the way. I'm not sure if you know this, if they're going to go out the door that way. The time has passed and you're going to move on. We're not moving. So the CEO wants me to individually coach with this gentleman or lady. And so I had the conversation and and I think he was just really dumbfounded and dumbstruck, I guess, so to speak, that why this conversation was going to happen. And so we went through and talked about his review process one more time, talked about his strengths. And I said, why do you feel like you're not very good at what you do? And he goes, like, I always think I can do better. What I put in there is not always the best. And I think I'm really hard on myself sometimes. And when I put stuff in, I know I can do better than what I put the effort I put in. He was talking about effort and also the outcome. And I'm like, but everyone else tells me that when you do this information or give this information or do this part of your, your job, that you do great. I, I what I don't understand, I just don't get it. And I said, I don't get it. What do, you, what do you mean by this? He kept on going and it came down to the problem is that he just didn't think he was good enough. The strangest, not good enough. I'm not sure if you've ever run into that before, but 
I, I so I had to backtrack and understand and say, let's talk about your strengths again, your weaknesses again. And so we walked through the process and he finally said, I go, listen, I, and I finally came to him. I said, give yourself a break. <laughs> I said, give yourself a break. You're this, whatever, how old he is. He's been doing this job for three years. Yes. He's around extraordinarily amount of great people, smart people. Um, and he's maybe a little intimidated by that could be part of the deal, which again, very strong team, fun, very strong team. And so I think that's an aspect he'd been doing it six years, everyone else around, maybe this is the third part of their career. They've done this job several years and then another company several years. And this is maybe their third time in another company. And they're all really good and really smart. So I think that can pigeonhole you into this thing called imposter syndrome, right? Where you're not good enough. And I just wanted to make sure I had to tell them the validation. I will go walked into this later, but the validation piece of this thing is obviously the CEO loves you. Obviously the CEO thinks you can do the job. You're great with clients. These are the things you're really good at. I said, cut yourself a break. And then- well. And that's hard. That's easier said than done. It is. Because so many people have so much self-doubt, lack of confidence. To to this person's point, I can do better. Hell yeah, everybody can do better. We can all do better. There's always room for improvement. Nobody's reached the pinnacle yet. No. But I, I, I don't know whether you've ever noticed this. I see it all the time. And you and I are interacting with managers all day, every day. Yep. And... When you sit down to talk to someone and you pay them a compliment, wow, you're really doing this really well. They'll give that kind of a brief sort of, yeah, okay, yeah, thanks, but I can do this. They go right to the negative. I can do this better. I need to do more of that. I need to start working on this more. And it's like, slow down. And in fact, I had a, I have a CEO of a very successful company, a leader, the number one brand in his industry. And he's killing it. His business has doubled plus over the past couple of years. He is doing almost everything right. And I'm in a coaching session one Friday morning with this guy <laughs> and he's sharp, he's smart. He's built this thing with no business background, built it out of the his garage, literally out of his garage. And he's going on about how this other guy is doing so much better in this product and this other mm -hmm. person, like, why isn't my team able to do this like this team? And I said, hold on, Patrick. I said, look out that window. <laughs> That's your car parked right there. That's a $125,000 car. And what do you have home at home? You've got another $150,000 car. And, and oh, by the way, your wife has one. Yeah, you live in a beautiful home. You you just bought a race car, for God's sakes. You've got a race car. And you're spending your free time learning to drive a race car. I don't understand. What are you doing wrong exactly? <laughs> and I guess sometimes it comes down to recognizing that the difference between what I've accomplished and giving myself a little celebration, a little credit, dwelling on those wins a little bit more, giving myself some time to reflect that I'm doing well. I'm doing fine. Look where I've come from. We've got to go back through that journey sometimes when we're having that self-doubt. And it's common. In fact, the statistic shows that about 70% of the people, 70% of managers will have at least some self-doubt, imposter syndrome sometime in their career. If you're a perfectionist, and I, you and I both know this fellow you were talking about, yeah. in fact, is a perfectionist, and, and that's a strength, and that can be an opportunity because you can overwork things or you can create your own self-doubt if you're a perfectionist. And I can't mm -hmm. unwire somebody from driving for perfection, but it sure can erode your leadership authority and how others view you if you're constantly beating yourself up. And hey, where's the motivation for you to have this confidence, exude this confidence? Because as I say to, and as do you, the mm -hmm. many managers, everybody else feeds off of you. And if you're coming in and all you're doing is beating yourself up and telling and sharing with everybody how you could do so much better, you know what? They're going to believe you. 
they're absolutely going to believe you. And is that really what you want them focusing on rather than looking at somebody that's accomplished a lot, mm -hmm. achieved some pretty big mile, milestones, continued, mm -hmm. started at the bottom, worked their way up. That's pretty damn good. And sometimes the environment, the company, the culture that someone's working in could have a an impact on this imposter syndrome. You know, in fact, I've got and probably a whole nother show of those people <laughs> who we work with that or think they're way better than they are. That's a whole nother class, right? They need a little imposter syndrome. Totally different. <laughs> but that's a very, that's a very small group. But if I'm fairly accomplished and I got to tell you, guilty as charged, I've had this same feeling. I've sat in a room of my peers and looked around and said, wow, I don't even know if I'm worthy of sitting in this room with these people that are achieving all this. Why am I not that smart? Then I have to remind myself, hold on a second. You've done this. You've done this. You're killing everybody in that. And I've got to get my that confidence back because that's not the headspace that we need to live in. We need to be in the right attitude, the right headspace. But there's certainly certain industries and cultures, maybe tech, maybe bioscience, maybe yeah. sales. Sales is a big one where maybe there's high levels of expertise or achievement in fields. And, and unless you're at the top, yeah, you're not going to be as good as the person at the top. And there's only one person at the top. I'm okay being number two or three. I, I can always work hard to get to the top. I can apply myself to get to the top, but it doesn't make me an unaccomplished or I should be doubting myself. If I'm at the top of the heap or working towards getting to the top of the heap, we got to get rid of that. And so one of the things we're going to talk about today is how to overcome that. There are some self-guided approaches, which if you'll just write these down, y'all, think about it, listen to these again on the podcast. And by the way, if you like what we're talking about today, share it, like it, make a comment that helps more people just like you get ears on this kind of advice. Please do that for us. That you'd really be helping us out. But the, let's get back to the reality of, of self-doubt, imposter syndrome. It could be your own personality. It could be your history. There's. I remember once I was talking with a sales rep who was the top of the top. He, he, he was top 10 out of 3,000 salespeople, mm -hmm. really doing a great job. And I asked him what his motivation was. And this, I'm tying this back to personal history. He says, my mother, my entire life growing up, told me I was never going to amount to anything. Oh, boy. So every time I make a sale, it's screw you, mom. I'm showing <laughs> her that I can. And this guy was a six-figure salesperson, doing really well, had a, a very nice wife and family, lived in a nice house, doing very well. But he overcome that, per, overcame that personal history. And that was his motivation. That's, again, another whole show. There's many factors that create self-doubt. But if you've been, if you had a parent that constantly told you you weren't worthy, that you couldn't, that, and I can't believe how many parents... Well, as some sort of masked motivation, tell mm -hmm. their children, you're never going to be nothing if you keep acting like that. You're nothing. You're trash, whatever. Mm -hmm. Wow. In fact, I know I have somebody very close to me that he's an in-law. I had to pull him aside one night after at a dinner, family dinner, and said, it's not my place. But being the guy I am, doing what I do, I love you to death, but you cannot speak to your son that way. That is the last way. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to motivate him out of a spot that he's in. That's the worst way is to tell him how worthless he is, no. how lazy he is. That doesn't work, parents. So some of us need a little stimulus and support, right, in our raising and in our work environment. Certainly anybody that is not getting that 
in the workplace. And we know, Eric, there, there's companies out there that it's all negative feedback, negative feedback. Hell, no wonder you have a little <laughs> imposter syndrome, right? Exactly. I think there's a thing there. Going to my little story, another little side story of talking, the lazy thing that you just brought up was interesting because I had a, an old boss telling me that I was lazy. And again, as I was really good at what I did and obviously I got promoted through many times, but his use of the word lazy throughout the career. And I finally just had enough. I said, what the hell are you talking about? I'm the least lazy person I know. I can be lazy because I'm smart, but not like that. This is to my lazy. So to me, it was work ethic for my dad and all that stuff. And I finally just called him out. Like, what do you mean by that? He goes, he finally told me, I swear to God, it must have been 10 damn years. He didn't tell me. I swear to God. You know the gentleman. Oh, yeah. Uh, I do. And, and he goes, you're lazy with your talent. Was his line. Eventually, right when I got promoted to the next level, the last level, he goes, before I got that, he goes, you're just lazy with your talent. And to me, okay, could you have said that 10 years ago? Yeah, please. It makes Remember, sense to me. And a little clarity, right? It makes sense. So I, let's talk about, again, we're driving off in a little sorry. bit of a ditch here, right. Eric, as yeah. we tend to do. But <laughs> sometimes we've been raised in an environment or have grown up in a career environment yeah. that we're getting misguided feedback and some weird strange way that somebody's trying to motivate us by give, giving us negative acknowledgement all the time and in ways that we have a tough time processing that certainly is going to erode our confidence. If you're in that environment, if you've been raised by somebody that was very negative to you, if you've got a boss and God knows you and I have had those bosses that feed on just telling you everything that's wrong all the time. Yep. And I'm telling you, anybody that's listening to this show, I and Eric have both lived in that space. We know how it is. And we are going to share our approach of how to overcome it because we had to. Yeah, We had to do it just if you're struggling with it, you're struggling with it. So it can come from a lot of different places. It's how we're wired, how we're built. It could be the environment we're in. It could be that there, there was somebody in our life that says, don't get too cocky. Don't be overconfident. You know, mm -hmm. don't beat your own chest. And yes, I agree with all that. And again, I've got a, a fair amount of confidence, maybe more than some. And I don't mind being a little cocky from time to time, but try to throttle that. <laughs> but hey, a good ego, a good healthy ego is not a bad thing. It's good. There's a line you can cross over and we've got to work on that ego. That self-esteem is what drives all this. Mm -hmm. It's the heart of all of it. It's one of the most powerful influences we have on our life and certainly our success and career. So let's, sometimes we have to unpack what's going through our mind. And that self-esteem is where this resides. And if I know that I'm, that I'm recognizing this, at first I have to recognize I'm beating myself up too hard and I've got to want to do better. Nothing that Eric and I ever talk about is worth the air, the air that your ears are wasting listening to this if you don't go do something with it. So- right. First thing you, you must do is you have to be aware, acknowledge it. You've got to tackle it. You've got, if you're going to be good, if you're going to be better, if your people are going to feed off of confidence and positivity, it's got to start with you. Yeah. So acknowledge it, become aware of it. And Eric, what time in your life do you remember that you had to catch yourself from self-doubt and be able to turn yourself around? Yeah, I think it it's a great question, Vaughn, because it's not just one time. There's several times. It happens. And change of careers, even in the same position at times where maybe you haven't done something, you've been accomplishing a lot of things, and now changing forces, metric numbers, uh, you name it, start to infiltrate what we used to do, which is just about people, because every business is a people business. But when you start to, that's your tagline, that's been my tagline forever, and I know yours too, but when metrics start to impress upon 
pieces. I thought of conversion rates, for instance. It depended We at the beginning of conversion back in the day, 15, 20 years ago of whatever business you're in sales and or in retail that happened to be mine, is that when you didn't reach a goal of conversion, I mean, it, it, it can crush you. Oh my God, what am I doing wrong? How can I do this? My people, I've got 70 stores. I've got to make sure I convert rates and everything. And eventually you've got to, you have to accept it. You accept what's going on. And you say to yourself, I need to make sure that I'm good enough to do this. And you work yourself through it. You accept it. You find, you do have the ability what's going on. I don't need to fake anything anymore going on. I'm confident in what I'm doing. And eventually with that hard work and understanding, it comes validation because it does pay off. You do figure it out and you validate what you're doing. You validate that you are good enough. And normally with a good mentor or a coach, which are out there, it doesn't have to be a direct boss, can be a peer. Peers can tell you, hey, by the way, you're doing a great job. And you go, really? And that that sometimes is always better sometimes than the boss, by the way, in my opinion. So validation with that is always a great feel of what that is. And I just, it's hard sometimes, Vaughn. I'm telling you, when you've been good, you've been on top of the mountain and you're growing and you're going and something new comes and you got to do something new, it can be a doubter. It can be. And recognize, let's acknowledge and recognize this, that Mm -hmm. everybody sucks when you don't know how to do something. Sure. And right. And listen, many of you are listening to this podcast today because you're trying to figure out, find some resources, how to be a better leader, a better manager. And in this case, we're talking about how you as a human need to be able to project yourself internally in a way that's positive. You're never going to reach the level that your that your potential lays out for you if you're doubting yourself all the time, if you have this imposter syndrome. And let me just say this, people are not successful because they're lucky. People are successful. They're either born into success, which, boy, did I not get that luck, or they create their success. There's nothing that's going to come good in your life without hard work. And I've often said, and I've, I said it from the beginning because I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I'll outwork just about anybody. Hell yeah. And I believe I did throughout my career, and I'm still outworking most people at the ripe old age that I'm at because I'm driven for success, but certainly I've had my setbacks. I had to recognize it. I had to look at my successes, what I'm able to offer, what I'm very good at, stick with what I'm good at. If I needed to learn something new, as much as I wanted to avoid it, I had to embrace it and go suck at it (laughs) until I got better. (laughs) Um, and so, yeah, you're going to have, yeah, it's not luck. And listen, if no. you have external factors that are affecting you, you're going to have to get over that. You're going to have to, that's an internal self-esteem thing that you got to recognize that you're better at what somebody's trying to make you feel like. You're going to have to maybe fake it a little bit a little until bit. you get there, until you get there. And then the, you talk about this validation and and that's not a parking validation. That's a you're doing well validation. It's yeah. So if you're spending time beating yourself up, self-doubt, feeling like you're faking it, recognize it, recognize it. And now let's start talking about how to overcome that. Yeah. And again, this comes with hard work. Every journey begins with the first step. First step is recognize it. And second step, that here's some of the things you need to do in order to fix it and get your head right in the that high self-esteem confidence that's going to drive you to the next level of success that your people are going to feed off of to drive their own success. They're counting on you. And if you're having negative thoughts, first thing you need to think about is catch yourself. Be aware of this negative thought. When you're starting to go through these slumps in negative thought patterns, you're going to have to catch it. You've got to recognize it and then begin reframing those. Yes. Those thoughts into something a little more positive. Eric, thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I think, like I said, everyone goes through those pieces and you want to make sure that the reframing things, I love that phrase, because you can build anything upon any kind of negative piece, because obviously you're doing something to get those negative thoughts. It may be something that's not right, but you know, it. listen, I think of baseball, right? You fail 70% of the time and you're a Hall of Fame player. That's what always comes to my brain when I've done something wrong or something, listen, in life, you have to learn how to fail to learn how to succeed. That's happened sometimes. A lot of those things in life I've always had, or if you keep on, call it chopping wood or whatever you want to call it. My daddy used to call it chewing cabbage. You keep on going, you'll get through those silly, stupid things that try to bring you down. It just It doesn't work that way. You got to keep on counteract it really with evidence of any kind of stuff that's in your brain with stuff that you know how to do. You've had successes. You've had tons of achievements. Even it might be a new field. It doesn't matter. Those things, you keep the same kind of components that you did in the past and do the same type of things and you'll be successful as well in the new fields. I'm positive about that. You know, said, and when these negative thoughts arise, stop, look at yourself. You're, you've gotten ahead. <laughs> right <laughs> recognize that you had to have been doing something right unless you're the the son or the daughter that got shoved into the position and even then you're going to have to prove to the rest of the company that you're not lucky that you're hard working and very often that self-doubt is very prevalent in a succession plan this either the the son or the son-in-law or whatever if you're doubting yourself recognize it. And the more you doubt yourself, the more everybody feeds off that. And you are likely to overcompensate in a negative way. So catch it. Think about what you're really good at, what you have achieved, what you can accomplish, what you have accomplished. Stay positive with that and be careful of taking all feedback personally. Yeah. That's counter to yeah. what you're trying to do. For sure. Because to me, feed, you personally. yeah, to me, feedback, I don't, maybe it's just me and my upbringing. I, I love it. I, it could be po- negative in that aspect because I can handle the heat. The positive feedback is I probably like a little least. I don't necessarily want to accept great feedback sometimes. It's weird for me. It feels like it doesn't drive as much, but I think there's a piece there when you accept feedback, good or bad, you're gaining information from somebody else's point of view. And a multitude of people, right? Friends, family, cohorts, people you work with. Sometimes they how are things going with the people that were below you. I think they'll tell you how things are. Then you'll go, okay, it's all in my brain. It's all in my brain. It's in my brain. Got to get it out. And another great way, and this helped me tremendously, is 360 feedback. Anonymous okay. 360 feedback. People are, many people, especially your peers, are hesitant to give you direct feedback for whatever fear they have. That's them, not you. But anonymous 360 feedback is fantastic whenever you can create that within your organization. I used to, I received it for years and it was so, back to your validation, it was so validating that the people who reported to me and my peers recognize my accomplishments, what I was really good at. I was really interested in what I was doing poorly. And I, but, I, and I wanted to know that so that I could go do something about it. Right. I didn't want to just, you can spend time on trying to figure out who's hitting you over the head with negative feedback. That's not productive. The productive part is take it. If there's a pattern to it, if there's more than one or two people that are saying that that's the truth, that's okay. Yeah. You can overcome it. Go mm-hmm. seek seek advice, take some training, go to YouTube, call results driven leadership, get some training. We'll help you out. That's there's ways around it. Don't just defeat yourself. And, and so you've just got to gain perspective on your performance, your abilities. That's where your disc profile comes in. Yeah. Again, disc is a magical tool. You know what your strengths are play to those strengths play to those three and recognize your shortcomings embrace those shortcomings know what they are and try to compensate or adapt for them or delegate that work to somebody else is going to be much better you don't have to do everything yourself 
But no. getting feedback from your boss, which I know in a lot of organizations, that they're not very good at giving feedback. No. It's one of the reasons why we have our course on performance feedback. It's a great way for you to have the the blueprint, the structure, the framework for giving feedback. But and it's easy to use, hard to accept the change, yeah. but it really works. But think about getting a mentor, somebody that's a role model as someone that either in your organization, outside of your organization, score, right? It is a great yeah. place and free. You can go find executive mentors who have been there and done that. And sometimes that third party objective view of what you're doing, what you're accomplishing is that catalyst to your own self-confidence sure. don't continue to allow yourself to be beat up by it and eric can you remember a time in your life that a mentor or somebody outside of you was able to redirect you a little bit yeah i was actually just thinking there's two things i was thinking of the client we're talking about today and how they saw somebody that they to be like mike mike be like mike jordan michael jordan he has somebody that he would love to be like and this person obviously is the embodiment of this company and i think you know who this is it's not the ceo but she's great but it's another person that's below that and he wants to be like that person and i said so went through the attributes and i go she said some very nice things of what you how to do it. and he goes really and back to the imposter pieces, I think there's a piece there that made him believe that he is good enough and he is. And then for me to your question is, yeah, I mean, I've always had, I've, I've had one that was really tough mentor and then one that was really motivating mentor, the last one I had. And I think there's a piece there that, that always listened and always wanted to work with you about very talkative. I guess the question is, he would work me through my work ethic is it was very strong and we would have, he would actually spend an hour or so a week, even though I had all these things going on, talking about what my weaknesses were, let's say presentation. How do you remember how to do this? How do you do this? So he worked through me so I can actually present in front of a tons of people that wasn't my forte. My forte is probably 20, 15, not a hundred. And, and he said, it's the same damn thing. <laughs> And it really is. It's the it really same is. damn thing. Yeah. But yeah. to me, it was the intimidating factor. And he worked me through it by practice and feedback and a nice approach the way I liked it. Not the hard approach, but more of a positive approach, which I never thought I would even like or accept it. And it's hard, as you well know, it's hard, maybe not for you as much as me, but to accept something that you're good at. When someone says, oh, my God, Vaughn, you are so good at this. And you always go, okay, yeah, I'm okay. I'm good. Yeah, I'm okay. But but it, but, but you know, don't just blow that off. Embrace right. it. Exactly. exactly. Feed yourself with that. That's okay to nourish your self-esteem with that. And if you if you keep blowing off this positive feedback, you're going to starve yourself. Yes. And that may be what's causing you stress, feeling overwhelmed, feeling weak, feeling less than capable. Yeah, that's all a, a self-directed mindset yeah. that you need to recognize and pull yourself out of and seeking positive reinforcement, seeking validation from a peer, a mentor, someone, finding yourself a coach, all that sort of thing. Listen, you're here today because you want to be better at what you do. Yeah, That's the first damn step is finding ways. So, Hats off to the thousands of people who are listening to this show. Thank you very much for listening. But secondly, thank you for being willing to learn something new. Yeah. And this is pretty simple, but hard to do. Yeah. And many people were promoted into management because they were functionally very literate or very good at doing some function within mm -hmm. the organization. And now you're a manager. That's a completely different function. It is. And most companies spend more money on training their forklift drivers than they do their managers when they get promoted. So you're just a victim of that. Uh, for every dollar, and the, here's a recent stat I just saw, for every dollar a company spends on technology, they should be spending seven 
on management development, on teaching EQ, how to lead people, how to communicate with people, how to have meetings, all those skill sets you need to be a manager. That's what this podcast is all about. But you're here, you're recognizing it, you're trying to overcome it. You became a manager for a reason because you're damn good at something. Accept that. And you'll be good at this too. You're going to be, but yeah. everybody sucks when you're new at every at something. Yeah. It's the maybe one percent of the humans on earth are naturally good at managing people. You had to learn to do it. You have to mimic others, you have to have yeah. good influences, but you cannot have a force field built around your growth called imposter syndrome. Yeah. You're way better than sometimes you allow yourself to be. So don't wallow in your perfectionism, your shortcomings. Yeah. Sometimes you have to, I'm not saying ignore them, but don't spend all your, don't spend all your time there. We've all had tough times. Everybody's had tough times. They're bound to come. It's not if it's when the tough times are going to come and the difference between successful people and people who are average or below is how you deal with them. And if sure. you're having a tough time, you're listening to this podcast and you're, you've got some self doubt, recognize all your strengths, all your accomplishments, the things that you're really good at. And then most importantly, whatever you feel that you're inadequate at, go get training or mentoring on that. Go get the resource you need to get better at it and then practice it because you're going to suck at it when you're brand new. The more you do it, Eric mentioned this earlier, the more you do it, your mentor had you practice in uh, presentations. And I've said it many times in my life, practice equals confidence. Yeah. And you pick up on a new uh, approach to something, whether it's how to sell, how to, how to manage or have a meeting, how to create a presentation, how to create a strategic plan. Just keep practicing it, practice it, keep doing it. And pretty soon you're going to have confidence in it and you're going to be very good at it. But if you keep yourself stuck and I'm no good at that, I'm no good at that. And that turns into procrastination, which is one of the reasons why some of you are listening to this show is you're putting off your own growth. Amen. Now you're here. Let's work on that. Take what you're good at. Embrace it. Recognize what you're coming up short on. Take action on it and then practice till you're good and then find something else. Practice till you're good. Find something else. Keep building on it. Don't let imposter syndrome hold you back. You're not listening to this podcast. If you're not good, I promise mm -hmm. you, you're not, you may be better, but I have, I, it's happened to me a few times in the past 10 years that I've been doing this business. And this happened last year. I had a, a lady reach out to me. She was promoted to manager by the board of directors. She knew she didn't know how to manage people. Had been listening to this podcast, came to me, wanted me to be her coach. And I knew she was going to be tough from the very beginning because all she wanted to tell me is how weak she was, how weak she was, how bad she was, how she wasn't prepared for this. And I put her into a couple practice sessions that she had to go have some difficult conversations with people. And I mm -hmm. never heard from her again. She just would not allow herself to get better. And it's all growth requires discomfort. Yes. All growth requires discomfort. Overcoming imposter syndrome is a one-time event. But yeah. it's a continuous process, right? It is. It is. And but you've got to be patient with your, yourselves. You've got to understand that occasional self-doubt is normal, but it does not define you. Look around. If you're comparing yourself to others, recognize how you're better in some areas than others. You're not bad at everything. You're really good at a lot of things. That's why you're in the position you're in. Then pick one thing that you want to get better at and go get some training on it. Learn how to do it. Practice it till you get good at it. And you slowly build your confidence, your self-esteem, your courage. It becomes 
you become very competent at something. You're very confident. And just like that old job that you were very good at that got you promoted, you were subconsciously very competent at that. But it took a lot of practice. Your first day, you didn't naturally know how to do it. You had to learn. Somebody had to show you. And through doing it a million times, 100 times, 10,000 hours, you became very good at it. So with that, we're going to wrap things up. Yeah. Eric, final thoughts on imposter syndrome and how to overcome it. Yeah, it's very beatable. I think accepting what you're really good at it and actually accepting it. We did this very simple process where someone says something good about you. Vaughn, I love your red shirt. Vaughn, you speak so well today. The only thing you can say back is thank you. It's one of those things, accepting something where someone says something good about you is a hard thing for some people to do. And I think that will help you through some of the imposter syndrome that does come in. If you don't accept what you're really good at, and don't just brush it upon. I think that's a real key takeaway from today's call podcast today. So, yeah, and internalize those compliments. Yeah. Feed yourself with those compliments. Don't just blow them off. Don't blow them off. Nourish your self esteem with that. Thank you all for listening. Please, there's a link at the top of the show notes. Sign up for our newsletter. It comes out every week. We give you great advice. If you're getting, information from the podcast thank you for listening of course but pick up on all the tools and blogs that we're writing the webinars that we're constantly running come join us there there's going to be a topic that you are going to recognize you'd like to be better at come join us read about it get on our newsletter find out more we'd love to have you more of a fan <laughs> because i the reason why we spend these hours every week recording and editing and getting this out is to help you. So please join the newsletter, share this podcast, like this podcast, comment on this podcast, help us help others. Thank you all so much. Follow us on LinkedIn, Results Driven Leadership. We're posting there all the time. And we'll talk to you all again next week. Well, that's a wrap on another episode of the Business Mechanic Show. If today's content resonates with you, then you're going to love what we have to offer. For those of you who are ready to take your business or personal career to the next level, we have an array of training and coaching services tailored just for you. From performance coaching designed to enhance your potential, to executive coaching that guides leaders to steer their ships towards greater success. Are you in sales management or looking to fortify your leadership acumen? Dive into our sales management training and coaching. Not only will it sharpen your strategies, but it will also provide you an ROI that's undeniable. Remember, the best investment you can make is in yourself and your team. For those seeking flexible learning options, we're excited to share our online and in-person management leadership classes. These aren't just your typical courses. They are meticulously crafted, ensuring that they align with your unique needs and aspirations. And the best part, prices start at just $47 per month, making top-tier coaching and training accessible for everyone. Your growth, both personally and professionally, can have a ripple effect. The one I call the transformational triangle of change. The skills you learn, the perspectives you gain, and the efficiencies you create can translate into increased revenues, more cohesive teams, and an enriched company culture. So why wait? The potential ROI on this investment isn't just in dollars. It's in the progressive future you're carving out for yourself and your organization. Thanks once again for tuning in. And remember, Every business needs a tune-up every now and then. Let the Business Mechanic Show be your guy. Check out our website, rdltraining.com, to discover more details on our programs and coaches. We have a link in the show notes to guide you there. Until next time, we're out of here.